Hello everybody, this is Purge, bringing you guys a bit of an overview video of some basics. I made a video like this about two years ago, but the downside is that the YouTube uh, video eventually exploded, and unfortunately the video doesn't work anymore after about 30 minutes. You still get audio, but uh, I figured I'd remake it. Uh, a lot of the newer people of the channel, as long as you've been here recently in the last year or so, you probably haven't seen this video. So uh, we'll go over a bit of the basics for what you want to buy with your starting gold. So you start off with 603, and oh. what you buy is going to greatly impact your performance in a game, but mostly for just the early game portion of it. All so it's really important that me. you get a good variety of things that cover all possible potential options and should position you well where you won't have to run back to base. Prepare and the reason that you really don't want to run back to base is that um, as you go to lane, if you have to leave the lane, uh, you lose a lot of experience and a lot of time farming, but most importantly the experience. Because if, uh, if you're low HP, you're not going to last it anyways, but just not being able to get experience is a big deal because when you come back to the lane, your opponent's going to have a big level advantage over you and that's going to cause you a disadvantage in the lane that could snowball them and hurt you a lot in the mid game. So. It's very important yes. to buy a mix of things. At the very least, almost everybody goes to lane with stat items of some course uh, of some kind, and this is usually in the form of Ironwood branches. Each stat point, um, one point of strength gives you 19 HP, one point of agility gives you um, one seventh armor and one percent attack speed, and one point of int gives you 13 mana pool as well as I think 0 .03, 0 0.04 mana regen per second. I forgot about the 0 .03 HP regen per second, by the way. And of course, depending on which um, uh, kind of hero you are, you get plus one damage to the corresponding thing. So Ironwood branches are really inexpensive for the fact that they give you slightly more HP, slightly more damage, and slightly more mana pool for a low cost. Usually you fill your item slots with these if you have extra space. So. Um, some basic starting item builds um, that we usually want to go over is we want a little bit of both types of regen, obviously. One salve and one tango are obviously going to give you enough regen to stay alive in lane. Uh, one tango can be used if you're missing slight amount of HP is when you use tango. If you're losing a lot of HP, use a salve. If you only get one type of the regen, if you only get tangos and you only get salves, then it opens you up into kill potential for either option, which is if you are missing 200 HP, you don't want to use a salve, therefore... Um, somebody could burst you and you won't be at max HP. If you only have tangos and no salves, if somebody does burst to you and you're at a low percentage of HP, it's going to keep you out of the lane for a long time. So it's important to diversify your regen if possible. The only lane that usually don't diversify your regen is in the mid lane, and that's because you're usually rushing towards a bottle, and the idea is you get a bottle fast enough where it can end up keaping you safe from uh, either types of uh, base harass. So that's pretty important. So for any safe lane farmer, I'll just go over the each lane really quickly. A safe lane farmer, usually you'll pick up a stout shield with a salve tango, and then a variety of whatever. Sometimes you can go without ironwood branches, sometimes you can. I like getting at least two ironwood branches for extra lasting and survivability, but the typical one is something like three, like this. So I have a little bit of extra gold here because the time is ticking over, so you'll have to excuse that, but I'll just go over every starting item build, basically. So on the safe lane, a stout shield is really important. The main reason being, if your allies are pulling, which they often will, they'll stack and pull, then this creep wave is going to be under tower. And if the creep wave is under tower, the creeps are constantly attacking you. And if you don't have a stout shield, you'll take a serious amount of damage very fast, especially if you have a low armor hero. Anti-mage, for example, is actually pretty low armor at 2. So um, it's pretty important that you do end up getting a stout shield if you're a melee hero in the safe lane. If you're a ranged hero, don't worry about it. Just bring like a ring. You can get a ring of protection. You can bring an extra tango. Something like that should cover you completely. So that's a pretty common... You know what? I'm just going to drop things for fun. Woohoo. And we'll have a party at the end with just like a crap load of items. As thou so I need about 400 gold. 400. And just a second, we'll tip, tip over to uh, 603. If you guys want to get a Quelling Blade, you can. But oftentimes, I would recommend grabbing the Quelling Blade in the side shop. You can purchase it from the side shop over here. The reason is that because if you buy it from the main shop, you end up running out of item slots. You can't really afford to get both a Stout as well as a Quelling. If you do this, all you can afford is one Tango. And that will open you up to possible potential harass. I mean... Especially if you're down there, the only way to get a regen item once you're on the bot lane is either ferried out on the courier, which you probably shouldn't do in the first two minutes unless you're having a really rough time, or you can buy a ring of regen from the side shop, which is really inefficient regen, or you can buy a ring of health, which is still 875 gold away, so it's not very safe to end up going for that. So don't really recommend it. I don't really like getting a uh, Quillian Blade Star. I almost never do, in fact. I, I think it's generally a mistake. So we can get like 250 gold to replenish this. You could also do something like this. This is a starting item build that you can actually afford, since Quelling Blade is a little bit cheaper than Stout. But generally, I don't really recommend this either. I don't think it's very useful. So, 
We can drop all the stuff again. That's pretty much the safe lane farmer. You shouldn't have too much variety past that. Actually, no, one other item build that I that I sometimes get is... Um, what do I need? I need a salve, and I need 75 gold. So you can purchase this with your strider item build as well. A ring of protection, three ironwood branches is with a self tango. I'll usually buy this on a ranged hero that is going to have some mana needs. What you can do is once you're in the lane, the first 325 gold you get, you can go over to the side shop either here or on the other side of the map here, and you can purchase a sage's mask. And what this does is it allows you to make a ring of basilius. So benefits of ring of basilius are obviously it gives you some mana regen. It gives you some damage, and it gives you a little bit more armor. So you get a total of three armor in the lane. You get a passive uh, 0.65 mana per second aura, and you also get plus six damage, which is in some ways equivalent to getting a Quelling Blade. It's not as much damage, but especially for a ranged here, it's a really good option. I like doing this on Sniper. I do this on maybe Necrolite because he's going to have some mana issues in lane, and especially any kind of agility carry, usually, that uh, doesn't have a lot of mana. And the reason for that is... This is a static-based mana regen item. This means that it doesn't it's uh, completely indifferent about how much int you have. Whereas the Sage's Mask, for example, a percentage-based mana regen item is completely Your based on how much int you have. Attack. If you have a lot of int, the Sage's Mask will do more. If you have very low int, like Anti-Mage has, for example, then the Ring of Basilius will give you more Your mana regen than a Sage's Mask attack. will be. And the magic number is 33. So if you have 33 intelligence, that's the point where the Sage's Mask and the Ring of Basilius will give you equivalent amounts, I believe, of... It's essentially equivalent, about there. That's the uh, the cutoff point. Where they'll give you about the same amount of mana regen. So if you're an Agi hero that has low mana regen or low int, then a Ring of Basilius is a really good choice. So this is a pretty common build for the safe lane farmer. Um, this is also pretty common for the off lane, actually. Um, I like to go this build sometimes in the off lane, but usually when I do it, I get a little bit extra regen. I do something like two tangos and one salve, and this is because I can build into a Ring of Basilius. I don't have to waste any item slots, and I have so much regen that I can at least trade equally with their support and make sure that I have enough regen to sustain the damage. So this is a really good build for the offlane for a ranged hero that will build into a Ring of Basilius in the offlane. If you are a melee hero, I usually like to go for something like this, where I'll pick up two tangos, a salve, and a stout shield. And you'll see me doing this a lot on games like Darkseer, for example. Darkseer in the offlane, um, pretty much any other melee hero. A stout shield is absolutely required on any melee hero in the offlane. Absolutely go for this. And a salve with a tango. I absolutely recommend getting two tangos because it gives you a lot more um, area where you can stay alive. You will trade hits with their offlane or with their support heroes. Um, I guess this is a little different if you're doing a dual lane. Um, but if you are doing a solo offlane, I think this is the best build. If you guys do have a dual lane in the offlane, I think the best thing you can actually do uh, versus two heroes is actually pick up a more typical item build. So maybe something like the triple ironwood branch with one tango, for example. I think this build is pretty good for a dual lane in the, uh, the offlane would be that's useful. But uh, grabbing extra region is never really a bad thing. I mean, everybody's pretty greedy about tangos usually, but the worst that can happen is you'll have leftover regen later in the game. And that might be able to save you from going back to Fountain. I mean, yeah, it doesn't give you as strong of an early laning stage, but it's not that bad to grab extra regen if you're honestly concerned about the lane going kind of weird. It pretty much covers you in a worst case scenario. You can always get your Midas a little bit later. It's not delaying you that much, for example. So... That is some pretty common farmer off lane. I haven't talked about mid very much, but we'll do that really quick. The common mid build, I'm missing about gold 220. Oops, that was too much. So I'll buy like one south here and then throw this down. So I have a little bit too much money, but basically the starting item build for the mid lane is usually something like this. Triple ironwood branch with a single tango. This means that you only have to get approximately five last hits until you have enough gold for a bottle. And then once you finish your bottle, just do your five last hits. Bam. Attack. And then your item build should look something like this. And you'll be in the mid lane and you should be able to rune control for your regen needs. This is the only reason why one tango is acceptable. There are some vulnerabilities attack. to this build though. Number one, if you get ganked, you don't have a salve. So you'll be missing a lot of HP or dead. So you can be vulnerable to that. Um, another vulnerability is if your opponent actually trades hits with you and he has more regen than you, then he can put you into an area that's slowly regenerating from tangos and then he can salve back up to full. So that can put you in a bad spot, especially if you're having trouble getting last hits. If you're if he goes for a stronger last hitting build, so for example, um, if somebody starts off with None something like, me. I don't know, let's let's get some gold here. Uh, if somebody starts off with a build like this, for example, they have slightly more last hitting than you, and it can be a problem. Or if they do something like this, 
they go for a double stat item, then they'll often be able to last hit you by just a bit, so that can cause a lot of problems. So that's one way to counter the triple Ironwood bottle build, so you have to be a little concerned about that. So if you're a, a bad base damage hero and you go for the triple Ironwood build, it can yes. definitely put you in a really rough spot. Ironwood branch. So little little differences in damage can make a really big difference as well, so you have to be concerned about that. Usually this isn't going to matter if the skill level is uh, anywhere near close to yours, but um, obviously it can impact things a bit. God, these all look so cool on the ground. Alright, uh, only other item builds I haven't talked about are support ones, so I'll go over those really quickly. Oops, I don't want to show that in shop. I know what it is. Yes. Let's get about Your 400 gold. Is under attack. So, starting support item builds. The most important thing that you can do as a support, obviously, is buy a courier. I really recommend getting observer wards as well. This will spend about half of your gold. And from there, you can fill in with the rest of the regen. So, I like going for a salve, a tango. Oops, that is too big. A salve and a tango. And then I should have oh about... Word. This is too much gold. 300. This is 500. I have 100 gold left over. Usually what I'll do is I'll do this. I'll get one Ironwood branch and I'll get a Clarity. So um, this is 600 gold exactly. You can drop a Courier. You can go put wards on the map. You'll have enough regen for a typical support. And you have one Clarity potion because usually supports will need a bit more mana boost there to be able to sustain their, their casting in lane essentially. So this is what I like to do as a support. The other side of the coin, there's two supports obviously. One support's going to buy the wards and the Courier. The other guy is usually... I'm just going to drop all these so I can show the full 600. I don't want to miscalculate here. So there's 603. The other guy usually buys a Sentry Ward. And sometimes a Smoke, at least in high-level games. You don't have to get a Smoke, but I think it's pretty useful. And then... Oh yeah, I want to buy these because I don't want to get confused. Oops. I go. Self Tango. And then you can do the same thing. Clarity, clarity with an Ironwood Branch. It leaves you a little bit low on uh, stats, obviously, but this covers a lot of things that you need to do. And the reason sentries are so important, I talk about this in almost every support game that I play now, is that people are getting better and better at blocking this camp with Observe Wards. At lower levels, they're always they're always just going to put it right there. So it's really easy to deward. You'll place the sentry about here, or you can place the sentry like... Yeah, probably about here. I like to play right, place it right above the trees, and that will get a vision like this, something like this. So any bad player is who blocks this camp, which is already like not too bad of a player, is going to put it within this area, and it's going to be very easy to find. So sentry wards are super important because if they do block your pull, your support heroes aren't going to be able to grab EXP in any way, and they're also not going to be able to deny experience from any offlane hero. So I completely recommend buying sentry wards. I've had many games where I buy sentry wards, and then I end up not using them for 10 minutes, and that's fine because they guaranteed that you could pull. And that's a lot of experience. Don't go to lane and be greedy with an extra, I don't know, whatever. You could buy, like, maybe a gauntlet or something. I could have gone to lane with maybe an extra gauntlet instead of buying a sentry ward. But it's really not worth it, because this little bit of extra HP, the 60 HP, or the 57 HP that the gauntlet gave me, is not worth losing a level or two in the early game. I can farm the gauntlet from killing the neutrals, so make sure that you do buy the sentry wards. It's a really big deal for support heroes. Yes. So, um, the only other weird item builds that are pretty common for anyone else are Enigma, probably, and Chen, because those heroes can jungle really, really effectively. For those heroes, uh, you can actually get no, by without any me. any region items at all. On Enigma, I usually pick up at least one Tango, just for safety reasons. But um, my way. Enigma, I'll usually buy either Observer Wards or the Courier, and then from there, I just kind of stack a ton of Clarity Potions. And once you have enough Clarity Potions, then um, you can basically just jungle That's without taking any damage, assuming you're practiced enough, and you don't need any region. So for a hero like Enigma, I'll just do like... I'll do like Courier... And then four clarity potions or something. And then I'll save the rest of my gold, and then I'll go towards the soul ring. I don't recommend ever buying the soul ring recipe in preparation, especially as a jungling enigma, and in an offlane as well. Um, you shouldn't do a soul ring recipe as an offlane darkseer. The only case that I'll do a soul ring recipe as a broodmother or darkseer is if I ran them, and I have 850 gold. That's the only case that I'll go to lane with the soul ring recipe. If you go to lane with the soul ring recipe, and then you have any kind of trouble, you're going to be in a lot of trouble because you're going to have a piece of paper in your inventory, and it doesn't do anything for you. So, so yeah, make the sure the, the ultimate clear. points are make sure that you have enough sustainable regen to stay in your lane so you don't lose EXP. You want to be uh, survivable against multiple types of harass, whether that is slow harass or burst harass. And you need to stay in lane and continue getting last hits, because if you can't do that, then you're going to have a lot of trouble. Stout shield super important for carries in the safe lane. Uh, if you go in the off lane, make sure you have enough regen to trade hits with their, with their support heroes and to stay in lane as long as possible. 
at least until you can hopefully get a bottle or some other kind of regen item or a boots and be more sustainable there. And if you guys are in the mid lane, make sure that you have enough stats to give you a lasting advantage to have enough regens to sustain until you hit your bottle. And then um, you can do other weird stuff if you really want to. Lots of last hitting power to hopefully outlast your opponent and then make yourself towards a bottle. But usually that's really, really high level stuff where you're so comfortable at last hitting that a difference of five to five damage is, is going to make a difference in your last hitting. So, and it, it depends a lot on the hero matchups as well. If you're versus a Shadow Fiend, um, I can talk about that really quick, I guess. Um, in high-level games, you usually see a lot of pooling of items. Your middle tower is under the attack. reason you see that is because it allows you to possibly outlast hit your opponents. So what some people do on the mid lane is if they're playing Puck, they'll play, they'll grab a Null Talisman and they'll grab two Ironwood Branches. And this is basically over about 600 gold, essentially. And this gives you a total of 9 damage on an interior, plus 2, which is 11. So an 11, oh plus 11 damage advantage here on the mid lane. If your opponent only goes triple Ironwood Branch, then all of a sudden you have this... Uh, oh my god, what is the math difference? Um, it is a difference of 8 damage, I believe. Yeah, a difference of 8 damage. So you have an 8 damage advantage over your opponents. You might be wondering where the regen comes from, and it's from your supports. Your supports would have purchased a tango and given it to you, and your other support would buy you a salve or something. And all of a sudden, you have plus 11 damage and a sal salve tango, which is really good on an interior versus a shadow fiend. That would give you like a 15 damage advantage over a shadow fiend, which means that you he really shouldn't get any last hits, unless you have no chance of denying them. So... Item pooling is a possibility that you guys can do if you're jerks and pubs, but um, playing high level games pooling is sometimes very important to make sure that you prevent your opponents from getting that advantage. So I think that's about it for starting item builds. Uh, spending your gold wisely is a huge deal. Um, a lot of players could get, win a lot of games by not making these mistakes because it will prevent you from going back to base. But I think that's about all I can say on the topic. So starting item builds is very important. Play it safe. It's almost always better to play it safe unless you're a much better player than whatever you can wing it. But going to lane with just like a gloves of haste and a and a and a salve is not worth it. Um, I guess I can look at some really commonly bad item builds while I'm sitting here, and then I'll I'll close this one out. Uh, really common crappy item builds that you shouldn't do are boots first with a tango. Um, you can no, actually so do this with an Ironwood branch now because boot co change or the boots cost a little bit less now. Or instead of an Ironwood branch, you can get a Clarity potion. But I really don't recommend this because unless your roam is successful, um, this isn't isn't worth it at all. So don't recommend this at all. Goddamn, all these things this looks so cool. Um, don't do that. Don't do starting bottle. Starting bottle is really bad. Um, we talked about regen diversification a bit before. A bottle only gives you a total of 135, 230, 405 total HP regen for the entire bottle. If you don't get a rune, that is worse than one salve. One salve is 400 HP. Three bottle charges is 400 HP. So if you take a lot of HP harass and you have to use all three bottle charges to keep your HP in a good area, it's absolutely not efficient. And comparing this to a clarity potion, it is a total of 210 mana regen for three bottle charges. Two clarity potions cost 100 gold, and that gives you 200 total. So... Grabbing a bottle first is really not recommended either. It's much better to do the three Ironwood branch into a one Tango build. I think that build is the much better way to go. So the path is clear. The pump. <laughs> Your One of these computers is making is music. All right. Uh, I think that's about it. I think I covered just about everything. Don't get bottle first. Don't get boots first. Don't get Basilius first. I haven't seen this in a really long time, but don't do this either. Oops. Your bottom tower is under attack. Basilius first is really bad as well. It's cost 500. If you really need the mana regen, just get like a clarity potion or something like that. Your bottom tower is and I think that's about everything. So, yeah. Buy your items. Play it safe. It'll put you in a good spot. And that's about it. Alright, thanks everyone for tuning in. That is a tutorial for uh, what to buy if they're stunning gold. Oops, you can't afford two selves. How many selves can I find? I go. I have a lot. Items. Out of my way. Alright, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.